I am human. I am not perfect, but I am not my acne. I am not what you see, what you think. I am not the makeup I put on in the morning to console my blemished and still growing self-esteem. I am not just the medications I take for my acne. I am the person that you see in the hallways, on the bus, and in stores. I am a person who wants to bring acne acceptance to society's eyes. I have always thought that I was my imperfections. This is where a lot of us are led wrong. This is where social media, our friends, our enemies, and where we ourselves may be led wrong. Someone may start us down that path. Sometimes it's a kid who made fun of us teasingly in fifth grade. Sometimes it's pictures on Instagram or Snapchat, people who you think are better than you. And sometimes it's ourselves in the mirror. In any case, we spiral. I know from conversations and guidance that I am not the only one who has gone through this. At some point, I believe all of us, or at least most of us do. But what does this have to do with anything? What does this have to do with acne or beauty overall? Recently, there have been movements for people who are plus size and pretty. How your stretch marks and shape don't determine who you are and don't determine your self-worth. Earlier in history, there have been revolutions presenting the philosophy that our skin tone, our skin color, don't determine our personal self-worth. And this has shown society's progress over time with superficial features. But in extreme ways, we need more self-acceptance, especially in more intense cases like my own, where acceptance should be brought into eyes. I have severe nodular cystic acne, and it's a genetic disorder that has been passed down from my parents. And I don't have control over it, but I am not those imperfections about me. It doesn't determine who I am. And in some cases, a bit of cleanser or moisturizer and less sodium in your diet can fix your complexion. But in other cases, some of us are left wondering what we ourselves have done wrong. Why don't we look like everybody else? Well, the cause can be genetics, diet, water intake, and stress. With stress, it can be a cruel cycle that I personally have gone through. You may get stressed from typical things like school, work, relationships, then you get acne, and it can become more severe. Then you're stuck worrying about how you look, about how you feel, how other people see you, about your skin routine, pictures, and all aspects of your life. And with the pain that it already brings physically, every day, it should be more accepted socially, so we don't have to go through that social pain. These people are not ugly, they're not zombies, they are not their acne, and other insults that may come to your mind. 80% of people will get acne from at least the ages of 13 to 30. Then why is it so socially aberrant, even in today's age? In my experience, even children have no idea what acne is, whether it's normal or severe. They ask a lot of questions, and even my peers teenagers are inquisitive. Adults ask, and although they may say it a bit more politely, it still hurts in the beginning if you yourself are not used to it. We need to learn how to answer these questions, how to get used to it ourselves and as a society. We need to share our flaws, including the ones that are out of our control completely, and learn how to accept them and, if possible, fix them. We need to ask ourselves about our flaws, and over time, we can answer them with the wisdom that nobody is the same and nobody is their personal imperfections. I've seen this politeness and help in my life in a couple of ways. One time I was shopping for paints and this younger girl approached me and she asked um, and said, I'm sorry, I hope it's not painful and that it gets better soon. But what is it on your face? Being told that she cared and that she was wondering how I felt about it, not just asking about why I looked so weird, why I looked so different, made me feel better about answering her question and feel better overall. And while everybody's experience and level of insecurity is different, this is typically a good approach. With comments like this, or even day to day with my friends, family, teachers, and other people in my life saying that it looks better or you're finally improving or I can see that you're in less pain. It really makes me feel supported and it has helped me learn how to improve my self-esteem and learn that I am not my imperfections. This rudeness is usually taken just from ignorance, not from hatred. But if we as people can take anything away from this, anything away from my experience, other people's experiences, or our own personal interconnected experiences, it's that we need to support people with complexion issues or with issues that are out of our control. 
And it's not just acne that I've seen being disregarded and made fun of, mocked, or stigmatized. It's also people with vitiligo and eczema who may be scared to show it or scared to even wear a t-shirt or a bathing suit. And I'm glad that it's on my face in a way because it opens the discussion more every time someone asks me how it is, how I got it, and if I'm okay. Because I am human. I am not perfect. And we are human. We are not perfect. But we need to learn how to accept and, if possible, fix these flaws. Whether it's acne, weight, eye color, or other differences under the sun, they should all be kindly discussed, learned about, and accepted overall, especially when they're out of our personal control. But every day, we can make progress. We can fix the stigma that we have created over time because we are not our imperfections. We need to power those imperfections and those flaws and grow from them together. Thank you.